Hello everyone and welcome to the sideboard. I'm Glenn Jones and I'm here with Michael C. Hayes. Hi. Michael. Nice welcome. to meet you. <laughs> Uh, Michael is a magic artist, and we're basically just going to talk a little bit about his background and how he got into magic, uh, what he does with magic art, and all that good stuff. So I guess, uh, first off, we'll just start with, basically, what projects were you working on uh, maybe before magic, or what led to you becoming a fantasy artist with magic? Alright, well, um, I, I, the, my first project that I started working professionally on was uh, Legends of Nora. that was Sony Online Entertainment's okay. uh, online card game. And I had, uh, magic had always been a goal of mine from, from day one. And I, so I'd kind of, the cards I did for them, I tried to, tried to push them in, you know, into that magic, magic uh, visual, that, that, that aesthetic. Um, as far as working for magic specifically, I'd actually bought, I bothered them for four years. I, uh, when, I, when I first was trying to get going, I met Jeremy Jarvis at Comic-Con and showed him my portfolio and he said, nope, not yet. Here's what you need to do. <laughs> um, it's very nice about it, very professional, very helpful. Sure. And, uh, a year later, tracked him down to Gen Con, showed him my portfolio. He said, great, you did everything I told you to do. Now do this. <laughs> and so, again, I showed him another portfolio a couple years later. And he said, all right, I'm going to give you a shot. And he gave me a uh, Kremlin Colossus was my first card. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd never done a rock monster before. I'd never done any kind of non-human. And I was completely scared. But when he, you know, I wasn't going to say <laughs> no. <laughs> I wasn't going to say, can you give me something easier? So, you know, I did, did what I could, did a bazillion sketches. And sent it in and it turned out really well and, and uh, shortly after that um, he started just giving me regular work. Nice. Uh, I, I can't imagine that being like super intimidating, something completely new and yeah, you, yeah. you can't ask for anything else. Exactly, like you know it had been a goal for five years and I was hoping to do like an angel or something I'm good at, something, something, you know, sure. <laughs> something, something in my comfort zone and he ripped me right out of it. <laughs> uh, what are some other just like early pieces that kind of like, obviously now you're more into it, uh, you've gotten the hang of it, but what were, were there any other interesting pieces to start off with? Uh, well, the second card I did was Distress, and it's probably still one of my most popular cards, the card I, uh, I get the most comments on. Uh, for people who aren't familiar, it's the guy holding his eye with the little guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so I tell people, you know, for that, I mean, I use a lot of models and stuff, and the sure. story I tell people that is I needed, I needed, I needed a reference of a guy holding his eye in pain. And uh, so I took my camera, and I, I went up to my father, and I tapped him on the shoulder, and I poked him in the eye. I took a picture really quick. <laughs> I didn't really do that. <laughs> but I, I like to tell that. people. <laughs> I like to tell people. That's my favorite story to tell people at conventions because I get a laugh every time. Sure. Uh, but no, I, I basically just had him hold his eye and pretend he was in pain. And, and we kind of went from there. And I made him look a lot more grotesque and clammy. And, and, uh, <laughs> and to this day, I still get people looking at it and get creeped out. So I, yeah, sure. I think I did my job. <laughs> it's a nice piece. Uh, I know a lot of people, I'm sure, have been having you sign them just all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah everyone's got that one card that comes up the most, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Uh, so, what other projects do you work on in addition to Magic now, or is Magic just more of your full-time thing? Um, I, I, I do a lot of different things. I'm doing um, I'm doing some gaming mats, uh, not specifically for Magic, for another company that markets to okay. Magic players. I uh, I do all my art work traditionally. It's all done in oil. So I've actually uh, I uh, I make a good chunk of my money on private commissions from art collectors. Sure. Um, I do uh, novel covers and stuff as well, uh, role-playing covers. Um, and I'll do if I'm, I don't have work. I'll just I'll do personal work and I'll try and sell it as well. Uh, so I, I kind of keep my you know trying to keep trying to do quite a quite a few things. So what do you like the most about working in a physical medium like oil? Uh, I, I like the tactical feel of it. The feeling you know there's that, the fact that I'm working on a real thing instead of staring at a computer screen all day with with a with a stylus. Um, and at this point, I have so much experience with it that I just I'm, I'm comfortable with it at this point. Just there's sure. there's something that, there's the smell of the paint, the everything you know, the, the brushes, everything just kind of I don't know, it just feels right at this point. <laughs> uh, how long have you been working in uh, oils or like even art, I guess? Um, professionally for only about four years now. Sure. Um, about and I had about um, about ten years seriously uh, up at this point. It's about uh, as far as you know, going through school and, and then starting to try to work and stuff. Do you have any advice for any uh, burgeoning fantasy artists who might be watching the feed? Um, work hard, work harder than everybody else, and work smarter than everybody else. And that's the hard part. <laughs> um, you gotta, you gotta. Uh, I, I tell people it's a bit like training for the Olympics. If you wanna, you know, if you wanna be a sprinter, you can't just go jogging. You know, it's not gonna make you. It'll help, but you, you need a coach. You need a, a running coach. You need good shoes. You need. You need to, to be thinking constantly about what you're doing, and you need to be competing on that level. So in this in this industry, there's a there's a lot of wannabes and very few get to bees. Um, and if you want to be one of those get to bees, you have to be very passionate about it. You have to you have to be very devoted. You have to be willing to put in the hours, and you also have to get the right information either from a good uh, a good drawing instructor or, or a 
have, or there's videos online, but you, you have to actively seek it out sure. and make sure that you're not just running in circles. Um, that that's the short version of, uh, of how to do it. The, the long version I could write a book about, and there have been many books <laughs> written about it that very you, true. you should try and seek out and read said books. <laughs> I think that that's great advice, not just for artists, but for anyone working in yeah. creative. It's always a really tough industry, no yeah. matter what you're doing. Basically. Yeah, there, there, for music and any, I mean, and, you know, programming, there, there's a, a, a general rule that it takes 10,000 hours of practice to achieve mastery. Uh, there's a great book called Malcolm, uh, called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell that kind of talks about it. Yeah. It talks about Michael Jordan and, and Bill Gates, and, it, and you know, reading that book kind of put things in perspective for me on how hard you have to work at this, how long it takes. And clearly, it's working out no. pretty reasonable. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you get back to your booth Alrighty. and your fans. All right. <laughs> so, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.